Liquid cooling could seem like such a daunting task when you're first beginning. Looking at all the different tubings, what should you go for? You like the look of hard tubing, but you don't know when to stop heating it. I'm going to address all of these problems for you today using both PETG and acrylic so you guys can get a whole idea of how long to heat that tube for and what to look for. Let's begin. So to start off guys, with liquid cooling, of course you need a silicon insert. This helps the tube keep its shape as you're bending it. So it is a must for liquid cooling. If you try and bend a tube without this silicon insert, you're just gonna get flat spots and it's not gonna be good for your system. Now when you are heating, you wanna keep the tube a safe distance away. Now you can vary your distance depending on how fast you want it to heat. But remember, if you keep it too close, you gonna heat up parts of the acrylic too much and it's gonna start forming bubbles. Now, first off, I wanna show you guys what happens when you don't heat your tube up enough. So let's just have a look at this guys. This is a result of not heating the tube up enough. You can see that on the inside, it's not heated up. So it's just bunched up as we've made that bend. So this is a common practice of when you don't heat your tube up enough. And also normally you'd see some flat spots on the outside because it's trying to stretch a plastic that's not actually heated up. So you might see a flat spot on each side of the bend. However, on this one, we don't. It's just happened on the inside, but they are major indications of you not heating the material up enough. So now let's see what happens once we overheat this. So let's actually have a look at what happened here. You can see that there's a massive bubble that has occurred on the edge of the tube. You can also see that there are some really small, tiny ones which have occurred as well. This is a result of overheating. Now this is actually hot air trying to escape out of the tube which has formed this bubble. Now quite often you won't heat it up that much. I've obviously over exaggerated it for you guys to see. But if you start seeing small bubbles within the actual material itself that is an indication that you are overheating it too much now this does apply to PETG and acrylic but PETG is a bit more resilient when it comes to heating it up so now let's show you guys how to achieve a perfect bend what I like to do is I like to rotate this evenly I don't like to keep it too close to the gun or too far away now you can vary the distance to speed up heating or decrease heating time which is great for trying to avoid things like these bubbles or the little kinks for not heating it up too much. And what I like to do is use the weight of the tube and the silicon insert itself to actually see when it's going to start bending itself. Once it starts to kink itself, I leave it on for a couple more seconds and then I will do the bend myself. Now let's try this out. Constantly rotating, guys. So you can see that I paused for a second to show you guys that the weight was starting to take it. I did a couple more turns just to get that last bit of heat onto it. 
and then I completed the 90 degree bend. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. I showed you guys what could happen if you underheat or overheat your tube, showing you guys that the bubbles can happen, all the kinks on the inside from overheating or underheating. Also showed you guys how to properly bend it, remembering that you need to keep rotating so the heat is distributed evenly through the tube. Now the reason for this is when you're bending it, the outside needs to bend, the inside needs to bend, and so do the edges around the tube. So you want a nice even heat around the whole tube to create that perfect bend. Now I did share with you some tips to how to know it's ready when it starts bending itself. Remember, I was just letting the weight of the tube and the silicon insert itself just bend, and then you leave it on for a few more seconds, and that's how you know it's ready. So I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Remember, there are plenty more tutorials coming up. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys want to know about water cooling. I can make tutorials on anything you like. Remember to leave a like on the video, guys. Helps us out a bunch. And subscribe, and we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks, guys.